Um, my next uh, two presenters are, are uh, sort of near and dear to my heart because uh, David Lang is one of the writers on, my, on our website, makezine.com. He does a great column called Zero to Maker, which is about his whole journey uh, of trying to improve himself as a maker and uh, expand upon all the different sorts of making that he does. And he's involved with, with Eric Stackpole, who's here. He's involved in something called the Open ROV Project, which is a project to create a remotely operated submersible vehicle, which uh, is in, was inspired by a, uh, a legend a, a legend of gold in the, in the Hill City Cave, which they'll tell you about. But it's pretty exciting. I read the backstory before in preparation to this of how the guy who dove first dove on the cave and it was really harrowing and amazing, but it, was, it really reminded me of, I, like several people have died, I think, uh, diving on this cave, and this guy almost died. So it's an amazing uh, example of how a very simple tool, which they'll show you, a relatively simple tool, can do something that uh, you know, people risk their lives doing, which is a perfect application of robots. So anyway, they'll tell you all about the backstory, but here they are, Eric and David. So I'm David, and this is Eric. Um, thank you guys so much for having us. Gareth, thanks for, for the nice introduction. Thanks, Karen, for inviting us here. This is really, really exciting for us. So when we were, when we were invited, we kind of realized this was about tools, and we were thinking really hard, OK, so this is so open RV. It's an underwater robot. So how is that really? Is that a tool? How are we going to fit in? But then we were thinking, you know what? This is a tool. This is a tool for adventure. Um, and so before we get into actually how we built the robot and kind of what it can do, uh, we want to tell a quick, quick story. Um, Garrett, Garrett just alluded to the story, so uh, Eric, take it away. All right, cool. Thanks, David. Um, yeah, so there is this story. It was the inspiration. You know, a lot of tools come from inspiration. You want to do something, so you create a tool to do that. And I heard this story... And I mean, I, I don't know if you guys are interested. It's, it's, it's about some buried treasure and uh, lost underwater cave. Are, are you guys, would you? Okay, okay, all right, well, okay. So I've got this story, I've got it condensed to about a minute and 30 seconds, but there's, there's a lot, so just listen close. Um, how should we start? Uh, okay, <sighs> flashback, mid 1800s, middle of the gold rush, Northern California, two Native American guys rob a gold mining operation in Northern California, making away with an estimated 100 pounds of gold. And they're on a run, and a sheriff posse is gathered to chase after them, and they're trying to get away. The gold that they're carrying is so heavy that it's weighing them down, and they can't get away. So they ditch the gold. They hide it. And the sheriff posse is still running after them. And despite their efforts, the posse catches up with them and says, tell us where you hid this gold, and we'll spare your lives. So both men said they hid it. They hid, said they hid it in this cave uh, in, up in the, in the hills of the Trinity Alps called the Hall City Cave. Um, it's the Wild West. Despite the sheriff posse's promise, both men were hung on the spot. And the posse goes into this place where they told them that it was, and they find this cave, just like the guys described. And in the back of the cave, they don't find anything except for a puddle. And in the back of that puddle, um, which seems like just a puddle, is actually this vertical shaft, this vertical hole that goes straight down as far as they can see, completely filled with water. Presuming the gold was thrown down there with no technology to explore it at the time, they give up. <sighs> Flash forward again, mid-1980s. Uh, uh, a treasure hunter, a guy who does all sorts of gold prospecting, hears about this story. And he goes to the, uh, to the Hall City Cave. He has an old timer who, who told him the story, take him there. And um, doing snuba, which is kind of like scuba diving, but with an air hose that uh, delivers oxygen down to you. He goes down this hole, and he goes down as far as his hose would reach, about 50 feet. And he shines his waterproof flashlight down, and it goes as far as he can see. On his way down, he decided to explore these, these uh kind of branches that came out from the vertical shaft. He swims up one, his, his regulator at one point pulls out and he has to hold his breath and decide whether to swim up and hope that there's air or back down and up the way he came. He does that nearly escaping death. <sighs> Flash forward again, mid-1990s. <laughs> Two super pro cave divers went and reported 270 feet into this cave and still never found the end. And to this day, no one knows what's at the back of this underwater cave and no one's ever found the gold. No one knows what's down there. And so we decided, what if we can build a robotic submarine that can go down there for us? And so instead of me risking my own life, which my mom would never let me do, <laughs> we've built OpenROV, which is a robot, and it's got a camera on it, and the camera can see 
um, all sorts of cool stuff, and it relays that image live up to the surface. And kind of like playing a video game, I can drive the robot around by looking at this computer monitor, and I can see things that have never been seen before. So Eric told me that story we first met about a year ago. He told me that story, and my, I mean, like a lot of you, my job was just like, wow, that is so cool. And I really wanted to be involved, and I didn't really have any technical experience. So I said, Eric, you know, we should try and do something with this. We should try and make it bigger. So this was the robot that he had built already. Um, it was kind of a really early prototype. I said, Eric, I think we can do, I think this can be bigger. I think a lot of people are really interested in this, this kind of idea. So we started the website, um, OpenROV. And the community's grown to you know, 270 people on 30 countries. Everyone's contributing design ideas, other adventure ideas. Um, we have scientists are in, who are on Antarctica at McMurdo. We have um, fishermen in Thailand. All these different people have all these different uses for, this, for these underwater robots. And it's just been such a, a rewarding experience for us to do this kind of in public and to kind of go through this process with all these other people who are interested. Um, and so... This, the website is openrov.com if anyone's interested. So this is um, kind of how we, how we are building the robot. Eric can kind of take it away and tell you some of the steps and the processes about this. Yeah, cool. So, um, right, before you can use a tool, you have to come up with what that tool is and how to build it. So we designed it, and as David kind of showed you, the first prototype that, that I built looks nothing like what we have now, and that's because... I'm a strong believer in this, and I think you guys should be too. I really believe in failing your way to success. You have to try something out. Even if you don't have all the ideas together, you try something, and you learn what works well and what doesn't work well, and you improve on that. And um, so what we've been doing is we've been, doing, we, we've been building a bunch of these things. We came up with a way of building it really cheaply and easily and quickly so that we can try something and see how we can improve it. We're using a laser cutter here. And the way a laser cutter works is you, you lay a, a flat piece of material down, in our case acrylic, and it has this really hot laser beam that can actually cut through the acrylic in whatever shape you want. You can program that on a computer. So here you can see we have this process where we, we take a computer file and we cut out all these flat pieces of acrylic, and those all go together in this kind of uh, jigsaw way uh, to create the ROV. And um, so here you can see this is actually a slightly earlier version. It's now gotten more complex, but these are all just flat pieces of acrylic the top one, that shell, we just bend. We use a, a heat strip um, that allows us to bend the acrylic. And they all just assemble together, and, and they, they kind of get put together in a certain way. And then there you have it. You have your tool for exploration. And I think the telerobotics offer huge potential as a tool for exploration. Um, so I think it's a great example of, of what tools can do. Yeah, absolutely. So this is, you know, like this picture. There's a, there's a few more parts in this one right up here, but this is, this is the idea. We want this to be a kit. We want this to be something anyone can buy and um, put together themselves or make themselves. Uh, we made all, all, of ours, um, all of our prototypes at Tech Shop. This is a build night that we had. Um, we invited you know, members from our community to come out um, and actually build the ROVs with us. And we had about 10 people who came out and actually did it. So it was a lot of fun. And it kind of goes with the spirit of, of sharing and collaboration, which has been you know, the most rewarding part of the, of the whole experience. And here's the, here's the kind of latest version so. Yeah, that's the uh, same one that you're looking at here. And you can see it's got some batteries on board that do three things. They, they provide supplemental power, but they also help add ballast so that the, the robot doesn't sink or float. It's, it's called neutrally buoyant. And that way we can drive it up and down in the water as well as forward and backward. Um, and it's got little thrusters. It's got these little propellers. You can see kind of in the back, there's normally a, a shroud around them. But they allow it to move around and... Um, you can see that it's easy to do that. And there's this vertical thruster that allows it to move up and down. And then you guys may have seen this earlier. Um, we've got the camera, but of course, in a dark water-filled cave, you also need some lights. So uh, we've added those. And it's pretty cool to have all these little bits and pieces that you can put together. It's like when you're a kid and you have Legos and you can think of things you can build with Legos. <laughs> and microphones. Um, when you're doing engineering like this, suddenly everything is your Lego. You don't just need the constraints of that. You look at the world, and that has a whole bunch of stuff that if you can figure out how to put it together, you can build anything you can imagine. So for us, the next step is obviously going back to the cave and, <laughs> um, and seeing what's down there. But um, we also want to invite you to take part in this adventure. If you have ideas of lakes or ponds or parts of the ocean or shipwrecks or things that you want to explore, please let us know. We'd love to... Uh, We'd love to hear about them. But if you guys want to contribute on building the robot, we would also love that too. So any design ideas or if you want to get a kit and build one yourself, um, the invitation is open. Thank you. Thank you.